Hey, in today's video, I want us to talk about eat the rich. This phrase has really caught on in social media in the past few months, and I feel like we feel very passionate about that phrase, but yet simultaneously, nobody really agrees on exactly what it is. So I guess I want this video to be a little bit more like a conversation. I want us to talk about a few possible scenarios to what eat the rich means. And of course, I want us to focus more on the more positive definitions of this phrase. Um, but before we get started, I just want to draw attention to my shirt. As you may or may not know, the US Postal Service is currently under attack by Trump and all of his co-conspirators in of course a blatant attempt to steal the next election as if they didn't have enough attempts to steal it as it was i saw on twitter a few people trying to combat this of course by encouraging other people to shop at the usps merch store and this is one of the cute things that they currently have i saw they also have beach towels posters some you know usps memorabilia they have like stuffed animals of course they had like postage if you just want to just buy postage but i encourage you if you have a few extra bucks laying around to maybe consider shopping from the usps store because they're currently under attack and they're an institution that help us perpetuate our democratic elections and if you didn't know in the u.s constitution it says that congress is allowed to regulate the usps so no one has the power to just like undermine it or end it in any way shape or form let alone a sitting president so if you shop the usps merch you know it's just a small way in which you can possibly help the institution remain intact and of course i should say that this video is in no way sponsored by usps but it is sponsored by the fight for democracy so let's get started <laughs> So what is eat the rich? The first definition that I can think of is the most negative, which is like a literal violence against the rich. Whether that's some kind of like 18th century Marie Antoinette and you know guillotine scenario or just any kind of like present day, you know, armed conflict or just in any way, shape or form hurting people that are rich, like hurting them physically or you know, I don't know, some kind of weird cannibalistic scenario. I feel like that's what people that are very against the progressive movement, I feel like that's the definition that they immediately jump to. Personally, I feel like, of course, that's not what the phrase represents because the whole point to me of being a revolutionary is that you don't want people to suffer and you see injustice, unnecessary injustice, and you want to end it. So to be a true revolutionary, you can't just go out there and create more suffering, create more injustice, you know, kind of like an eye for an eye kind of thing. And my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes from Che Guevara is, allow me to say at the risk of sounding ridiculous, that the true revolutionary is guided by strong feelings of love. So I personally do not feel that rich people should just suffer whether that's violence or just emotional things in order for the poor class or the working class to progress and of course i don't encourage any of you in any way shape or form to enact any kind of violence on somebody that is rich or a politician or anything like that because like i said i just don't think that that's from my point of view i don't think that's constructive or helpful in any way towards you know progress the second definition that i often think people immediately assume either rich means is again some kind of um, evil scenario in which we kind of storm people's houses and we steal all of their stuff we take their money or even some kind of like anonymous hacker scenario where they like wipe all our debt please wipe all of our student loan debt and like take all their money and like give it away to the poor, like some modern Robin Hood scenario. And I think many of us, of course, fantasize about this scenario, but I think this is still 
very close to the first scenario in which we're just making people suffer. And if you allow me to share a little bit about my family so that you can understand why I'm against this second choice of some kind of a theft of the rich, just so that you can understand why I feel like it's still wrong. Growing up, my mom lived in Nicaragua in a very small town that like even had like dirt roads, okay? Like that's how small of a town it was. But my grandma and my grandpa, they managed to accumulate a couple of businesses and they were, by comparison to the people around in the town, they were very wealthy. They were not like Hilton kind of wealth, of course. All of their wealth was invested in the businesses. But again, just by comparison to anybody else in that town, they were some of the most wealthy. Now, in the 1970s, in Nicaragua, there was a civil war in which the Communist Party, of course, wanted to overthrow the oppressive conservative government. And they were actually successful. But what happened was when the Sandinistas, which is what they're called, the, you know, the Communist Party. But what actually happened was once the Sandinistas won, they came into my family's town and they pretty much took hold of the town and held everybody hostage. Everybody ran to the church. People from other towns nearby came by to the church to, you know, take refuge. And I've actually asked my family about this a couple of times and they always say, that the Sandinistas never took any of their stuff. All that they did was ruin everything. They like stumped on the textiles, they stumped on all the objects, they filled them with mud, they basically ruined all the merchandise and they didn't so much as steal. It was just a very much like a hateful gesture, which is what I feel like these first and second categories of eat the rich that people feel like that's what we want. And to this day in 2020, my grandma still deals with a lot of trauma of feeling like she's gonna lose things, uh, feeling like, you know, she needs to hold on to things. She doesn't like to throw things away that I would personally feel like they're trash and I should just throw them away. Um, like, I don't know, she has little things here and there that are just an expression of, tra of that trauma. And my aunts and my mom, of course, have this as well. Now, like I said, because my family, all their money was invested in their businesses, they literally lost everything. And once I was born, my mom was just working class, working paycheck to paycheck. So I never knew, I've never known wealth like they did. I think I shared this in one of my other videos. Sometimes I feel like I have some of that trauma as well, where I feel like I don't know where I'm going to number one, move and lose everything or I don't accumulate a lot of things because I feel like one day I could lose them or maybe I, need, I feel like the things I like to accumulate are things that will stay with me, nobody can take from me and that is all trauma and I don't think that imparting trauma on purpose on other people is a revolutionary act or is a just thing to do even on the behalf of other people. So that's why I feel like these more negative connotations of eat the rich, that they're not okay and I don't support them and I don't think that anybody else should be supporting them either. Of course, I feel like people like Trump and his administration should pay for their crimes, but I personally feel like sitting in a jail year after year, you know, day after day, year after year, you're gonna suffer way more than if you're just killed, you know, with, you know, a, a gun or a bullet or whatever, a gun, you know, whatever one act of violence you would choose to place upon them, that would be less suffering than if they just went to prison for the rest of their lives. So that's why I don't subscribe, encourage, or in any way, shape, or form, um, like those definitions of eat the rich but i'm very much of the sentiment of eat the rich which is my third definition which is wealth redistribution the first play of my songs and they've been following me yeah i don't like to do that much explaining and talking and of course i mean a peaceful just tax the rich wealth redistribution now thankfully we have a few senators and you know congressmen and women 
that are working on a possible tax for the rich for all the wealth they've accumulated during the pandemic. Thank you, Bernie Sanders, <laughs> as usual, which I feel is extremely fair. Everybody has been forced to shop from the same places that deliver online. Everybody has been forced to work online using the same sites. So it's only fair that all that wealth that has concentrated on a, on a very few hands gets redistributed via tax, via social uh, programs like Medicare for all, and of course, like unemployment and things like that. And additionally, of course, I would personally love it if the military was defunded, if the police was defunded. You know, there's so many things that don't help us working class if they're just done away with or just greatly reduced, you know, I would be so happy with that. But unfortunately, at the same time, we have people like Moscow Mitch McConnell in the Senate stalling everything that will help us. We have idiots like Trump thinking that we're going to survive on $300 a week. How much should a banana cost, Michael? Like $10? And I'm sure actually that many of you will respond to my video in the comment section and say, you know what, I actually agree with Eat the Rich definitions 1 and 2, where there's some kind of a violent component because you're pissed. You're pissed that all these greedy ass politicians are just lining their pockets while people die left and right from COVID, people die left and right from just poverty and hunger. 50 million people are unemployed and Trump wants to give you hundred and you know sixteen hundred dollars a month which doesn't even cover my rent and I don't even live I don't even have a bedroom I live in one studio apartment like a small studio apartment so of course I understand that people are upset but I feel like that's also where you come in what are you gonna do differently in your life moving forward so that we eat the rich and I want to talk to you about a few things that I feel like we can do also to really stop supporting things that don't help us in the long run. Just know she had coffee with me, yeah. I hear you like pizza and dance. Now, possibly the only one good thing about this whole pandemic that has happened is that it has exposed everything that doesn't work and everything that really doesn't help us or is necessary. Like, look, we never really needed to work from an office. We never really needed to get a car. Of course, we can only change those things moving forward. Another thing that's also been made very clear to me is the true American values. Politicians in the U.S., especially Republicans, but all politicians in the U.S. like to pretend like they're all about American values and family values and they just want to uplift everybody and give an opportunity to everybody to advance yet it's august 11th five almost six months into this global pandemic and congress still has not figured out how to just say hey let's not have people pay rent right now because 50 million people of them don't have a job Unemployment officially ended last week and we still haven't figured out how to send economic relief to families or even just food or just anything. I know that so many people soon will start getting evicted. How can you even blame people at this point in time for not paying the rent? Again, it took Italy one week to figure out, you know, the brilliant plan of allowing their population to not pay rent while well, all of this is going on and the greatest country in the world the most free nation on earth still cannot figure out how to just stop debt payments to everybody and i've read a few articles where people feel very of course ashamed that of the fact that they're not going to be able to pay rent they're going to have to move in with their parents they were on the verge of being financially independent before all this happened and they're not anymore and one thing that's really stood out to me in this whole thing is how a lot of the u.s values they're just things that of course are gonna make the rich people more money and they're not really values at all like for example the fact that at 18 years old 
every young person in the U.S. is expected and encouraged to move out of their homes. And if for some reason you live with your parents past the age of 18, somehow that's kind of a shameful thing to do. No matter what the reason behind it, no matter if your parents are sick and you have to take care of them, no matter if you're actually a contributing member to society and you work and you go to college and you just want to save maybe or you just want to live with your family, maybe you like your family, it doesn't even matter the reason. You are immediately made to feel ashamed if you live with your family past the age of 18. But if you really think about it, the only person that that benefits is the landowners. If you look at most countries around the world, it is the normal thing for families to live together. Sometimes even after, you know, the son or daughter gets married, it is so normal that your family will live together. And for some reason here in the US, of course, greed. For some reason, every person is brainwashed into thinking that you have to live by yourself, no matter how detrimental that is to the environment, to, you know, our air pollution, or even just to your own, the level of debt that you as a person will carry, the level of stress, the mental health problems that come along with trying to be an independent person in the 21st century, especially as a millennial now experiencing your second economic depression. And on a similar sense, we do the same thing to old people. We say, no, you shouldn't be living with your family. You should be put in a nursing home to live by yourself with a shitload of people you don't know. And I understand it's different when somebody has a medical condition and it's way easier for them to live in some kind of nursing facility. But I think it's so weird how so many people just put their parents in retirement homes. Like, how can you just one day drive your parents to somewhere else where they don't live with you? And I don't mean to make anybody feel ashamed because I don't know anybody's situation. I'm not saying that it's necessarily always morally wrong. But I personally think that this separation between children and their parents once they become adults, I think it's just a totally made up thing just so that the landowners can make more money. Because look, to now they're in COVID. If one or a couple people at a nursing home get infected with COVID, it spreads like that. And many of the people in that community get affected so quickly. And of course, they're all in the age group that is worst affected by the disease. But yet there's somehow, it's somehow a burden for a family to live with their elder. And I don't know, I just kind of feel like all of the above is just bullshit. And for some reason, like the previous generations have totally bought into this weird thing where you like don't live with your family and you're ashamed to live with your family. And I don't think that there's any point in doing that. And I feel like that's number one, that's a thing that we're all gonna be forced to do if the situation doesn't get better, of course. Many people will be forced to live with your families. But I wanna encourage you to not only understand that there is no shame in living with your family, even if you have to move back with your family, but that we should all be encouraged actually to live with our families in the long run. Like, why is it wrong that you would live with your parents when they're old? Like, of course you want privacy. <laughs> of course you don't need to live in the room ne next to each other. But... I just think like things like that are not true values. They're not true American values. They're just capitalist. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. They're just thing that in a capitalist system, it reinforces it re and perpetuates the capital system itself. And I feel like if we all start to pay attention and look more and more into what kind of behaviors we have bought into because they'll make somebody else money that we can actually abandon those behaviors if they don't help the working class in the long run and that's another way in which we can start to eat the rich like if there's suddenly no demand for retirement homes if the demand greatly increases for new homes and new developments by their own capitalist rules the market has no choice but to adapt and 
I feel like this is a way better solution than to go out there and harm somebody or just traumatize somebody in a way that is unjust because like I said, I fully support putting criminals in jail and making them pay for their crimes. Wake up every morning like it's Friday. No. Yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk to you about today. Let me know in the comments what you think eat the rich means and have you seen any other opportunities for us to change the way that we behave and a way that we can, yes, eat the rich in the future? And I do want to apologize if in any way, shape or form I came across like low energy or depressed. I'm shooting this on Tuesday, which just happened that Biden announced Kamala Harris as his you know, nominee for vice president, which I already knew was going to happen and of course I was hoping that would be it because the other choice was some Scientology crazy lady but of course in the middle of the biggest civil unrest that we have seen in the middle of the biggest movement towards civil rights we have Biden who helped write the crime bill of 1994 and Kamala Harris, a prosecutor with a reputation for jailing black and brown youth for minor offenses and just overall, just overall perpetuating the mass incarceration of black and brown people of all ages throughout her career. We have these two people running for president and vice president of the United States and they're somehow supposed to be the lesser of the two evils. I don't think I'm alone in not wanting to have anyone running for office that's evil at all. I cannot stand in any way shape or form to go on with Trump for four more years, but I also cannot stand to go on every four years choosing the lesser of two evils. So of course we need to build a third party. At the same time we're caught in this weird scenario where if you right now vote for a third party you're basically ruining Biden's chances to defeat Trump. So I guess at the point I'm trying to make is I'm just in a very bad mood today and I'm kind of depressed. So I'm sorry if that came across in my video. You know, it's never my intention to transmit those feelings to you. So I do apologize if that came across in my video. I want to do the opposite. I want to make you think about possibility. I want to make you think about how to make the world a better place. So anyway, Thank you for watching. If you still are, subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And when we get to a thousand subscribers, I am still going to give away two paintings to, you know, randomly chosen people. And I'll see you in the next one.